everybody, welcome back to The Wolf Pit with another episode of What Are We Eating? This weekend, I went back to my own personal adult playground, the Dollar Tree, and I'm bringing you guys with me this time for a quick tour of my own personal fun zone, the Dollar Tree frozen food section. They must have just restocked because they were loaded with wonderfully delicious processed foods. This is the main reason I do these videos, to show you, the people, exactly what we're eating. I should have taken a picture of all the health food loaded up in the cart that only cost $20. That's pretty impressive when you can fill up a whole cart for $20. I didn't say it was healthy food, but it's impressive though. I think, well, maybe not. Out of all the stuff in the cart, I'm gonna go over the Fast Bites breaded chicken sandwich, the fish and cheese sandwich, and the chili cheese dog. That's right, you don't have to go to McDonald's for a filet of fish, Wendy's for a chicken sandwich, or Dairy Queen for a chili cheese dog anymore. You can go to your local Dollar Tree. So let's go over the Fast Bites breaded chicken sandwich, which is a breaded chicken patty on a bun. Simple enough, right? But there's that mystery word, patty. Which in my experience with these foods, it's always a bad sign. Because these type of patties are made up of mechanically separated meats and fillers and then formed into a piece of meat. Well, so-called meat, that is. This sandwich weighs 4.9 ounces and obviously only costs a dollar because everything at the Dollar Tree costs a dollar. Now let's go over the ingredients and as expected, there's a lot of them. The sesame seed bun is a normal bun. So there's no big deal there. But then we get to the chicken patty and here's all the crap I was talking about. Chicken breast meat is a great start, but then we get to the third ingredient textured vegetable protein, which most of you already know, I'm not a fan of. I'm sure it's good on its own, but when I'm eating a piece of meat, I wanna eat a piece of meat. I don't wanna eat ground meat with a bunch of fillers in it. And that's exactly what textured vegetable protein is in this case. Now for the nutrition facts, and the serving size is the whole sandwich. Disregard the 24 servings, I got this from their website, and the 24 servings is for a case. For the whole sandwich, there's 370 calories, 15 grams of total fat, 3 grams of saturated fat, 0 grams of trans fat, 15 milligrams of cholesterol, 570 milligrams of sodium, 46 grams of total carbohydrates, 3 grams of dietary fiber, 4 grams of sugars, and 14 grams of protein. When I pulled the sandwich out of the box, it was a pretty small sandwich, but it looked okay. The bun looked decent, and the chicken patty obviously looked like it was stamped out on an assembly line. And unfortunately, the chicken patties look just like the chicken patties they serve at my daughter's school for lunch. And they could be the same chicken patties, since the company who makes these, Advanced Pierre Foods, distributes food for school lunches. That's actually true, and scary. The instructions say for best results, thaw first. But the disturbing thing about this is you can leave these in a the refrigerator for two weeks. Would you eat a real piece of chicken that sat in the fridge for two weeks? I wouldn't. But that shows you all the crap and preservatives that are in this. So after thawing, open one end of the wrapper and microwave on high for one minute. After heating for one minute, our sandwich is ready. Did y'all notice I happen to have a green plate, so I color coordinated the plates to match the box. I'm so hip, aren't I? The bun actually looks decent, which they normally don't after being microwaved. But maybe that's because they were thawed first. So maybe we're off to a good start. To get a better look at the sandwich, I cut it in half with a limited edition, state-of-the-art, scientifically designed, razor-sharp Plastisu knife. This version of the Plastisu will soon be a collector's item, so I must be careful with it. At this point, the bun and the chicken didn't look too bad. Then I took a bite, and the bun was pretty dry, and the breading on the chicken was pretty thick and dominating. Not really a lot of flavor, but as a sandwich, it's just edible, even though you get that all too familiar spongy texture from the TVP, which as I've already stated, I'm not a fan of. Then I took the sandwich apart to try the chicken on its own. And like I said, as a sandwich, it's just edible because the bun helps cover up the spongy texture. And like I said, as a sandwich, it's just edible because the bun covers up the spongy texture of the TVP. 
But on its own, the texture is too much for me. I'm serious. If you want to know what I'm talking about, go to your kitchen sink and take a bite of a wet sponge and chew on it for a minute. The patty was pretty moist, but that's really the only good thing I could say about this. Now let's try the Fast Bites Fish and Cheese Sandwich, which is a breaded fish patty and cheese product. There's that patty word again, and another bad word, cheese product. The chicken sandwich is a little lighter than the chicken sandwich, weighing in at 4.7 ounces, and again, only costs a dollar. Before we open it up, let's go over the information on the box, starting with the ingredients. Again, the bun is a typical bun, but then we go to the fish, and although I don't see TVP by name, there is hydrolyzed corn protein, which I believe is a type of TVP, so here we go again with spongy meat. Now for the nutrition facts. The serving size is the whole sandwich. For the whole sandwich, there's 360 calories, 13 grams of total fat, 2.5 grams of saturated fat, 0 grams of trans fat, 30 milligrams of cholesterol, 500 milligrams of sodium, 48 grams of total carbohydrates, 2 grams of dietary fiber, 7 grams of sugars, and 15 grams of protein. When I pulled this one out of the box, the bun looked a little bit shady compared to the chicken sandwiches bun. The cheese product is off center, so if I didn't pull it out of the wrapper, the cheese wouldn't even have melted on the sandwich. The fish patty itself surprisingly looks very similar to a McDonald's filet of fish. So let's get it properly reassembled and heated. The instructions again say to thaw and heat for 45 to 60 seconds. After microwaving on high for 60 seconds, our fish and cheese sandwich is ready. It certainly smelled pretty good, but the bun didn't look as good as the chicken sandwich's bun. The cheese product didn't really melt, but when I opened up the sandwich, it really reminded me of a filet of fish and I realized I didn't have any tartar sauce, which to me is what makes the filet of fish. Once again, I'm breaking out the highly requested Plastisu. For these type of sandwiches, you only want to use the best high quality cutlery. Once I cut the fish sandwich in half, I was really surprised. It looked like a real flaky piece of fish. By the way, do you guys notice another color-coordinated plate? At this point, I really wanted to try it. So I took a bite, and I was very surprised. It not only looked like fish, but it tasted like fish, and it had a decent texture. Though not the classic filet of fish, this is definitely edible. Not great, but edible as a sandwich. Then I took it apart to try the fish on its own, and again, it was pretty good. The sandwich as a whole wasn't too bad, but the bun was soggy, which I expected, and the cheese, well, it's processed cheese. The sandwich as a whole was pretty good, but the bun was soggy, which I expected from being microwaved, and the cheese, well, it's cheese product. Do I need to say anything else? But I gotta give credit where credit is due, and although I don't plan on buying these again, Fast Bites did a decent job on the fish. Finally for the chili cheese dog, and I kinda had high hopes for this, because after all, it's just a hot dog, chili, and cheese. What could possibly go wrong? I'm sure we've all had a bad hot dog or a bad chili cheese dog, so it can only be as bad as the worst hot dog you've ever had, right? But this is the Fast Bites Chili Cheese Dog weighing in at a hefty 4.2 ounces. And again, only costs a dollar. Again, the bun is a typical bun, and the hot dog seems to be a basic cheap hot dog made with chicken, pork, and if you read down a little, there's beef in there too. But nothing really out of the ordinary with the hot dog itself. Then we get to the chili, and just when I thought we were going to have something without it, there it is. Textured vegetable protein, along with a lot of other stuff. The cheese, however, is an upgrade. It's still not real cheese, but at least it's called American cheese and not product. Now for the nutrition facts. Per chili cheese dog, there's 310 calories, 16 grams of total fat, 
5 grams of saturated fat, 0 grams of trans fat, 40 milligrams of cholesterol, 970 milligrams of sodium, 30 grams of total carbohydrates, 1 gram of dietary fiber, 6 grams of sugars, and 11 grams of protein. The instructions on this one say to keep frozen until ready to eat. Then, open one end of the wrapper and heat for 60 to 90 seconds, which seems like a big time difference to me. That's 30 seconds. 30 seconds in a microwave is an eternity. So into the microwave it went. After 75 seconds, there were no more cold spots and I declared it done. When I pulled it out of the wrapper, it certainly smelled pretty good, to the point my mouth was watering. When I opened the bun to look inside, there wasn't a whole lot inside. And the bottom of the bun was burnt. Out of all the buns, this is the only one we cooked from a frozen state, and it's the only one that burnt. The wiener itself was pretty small. I'm glad I've never heard that before. And there wasn't much chili or cheese either. I tried the chili and the flavor wasn't bad and the texture wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. So I guess in this case, the TVP, it might be okay. Now for the Plastisu Trifecta. She's getting a workout today. I might need to send her off to get sharpened after this video. The Plastisu was certainly having a difficult time cutting through the hot dog bun as it was burnt. Right there, the hot dog, chili, and cheese looked pretty good. That was until I bit into it. I'm no hot dog aficionado, but I have never had a hot dog with this kind of texture. Very, very rubbery. Not just the outside skin, but the inside was rubbery and gristly. Definitely not a very pleasant texture. The texture is very hard to describe, but if I had to, I'd say it had the texture of a rubber fishing grub. Not that I've ever eaten one. Well, maybe I did, but don't judge me. It certainly looks and smells like a chili cheese dog, but that's where it ends, and there's not much more good to say about this. Although I don't see myself buying these in the future, if I had to, out of the three, I'd go for the fish sandwich. I don't really want to rate these, but you the people asked me to do so, so I'm going to. So, the chicken sandwich and the hot dog, they get a 1 out of 10. The fish sandwich is going to get a 3 out of 10. If you'd like to help support the Wolf Pit, consider being a patron. You can pledge as little as a dollar a month. That's $12 for the whole year. And every little bit helps. It helps me produce more high quality videos more often for you, the people. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you do not give these a try. Well, maybe the fish sandwich. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe and I'll see you soon.